So here we are, teachers, on the Project Gutenberg website looking at a primary source. Now, typically, primary sources are pretty dense. Uh, they use language that students are unfamiliar with and different sentence configurations, things like that. So uh, when we get into things like the Federalist Papers in particular, something like the Microsoft Immersive Reader can be really helpful for students to help digest such a heavy text. Now what I'm going to do is go across my three tabs here. I'm going to start with the Federalist Papers, then we're going to take a look at how we can take an open document like the Federalist Papers, copy and paste it into a Word document. I'm going to show you what the immersive reader features are like, and then we're going to go in and create a Schoology assignment using that OneDrive document so that we can really go from primary source to assistive technology and then into our Schoology course. So here we go. First, I'm going to copy the text of my primary source from the Project Gutenberg website. Then I'm going to go over to my OneDrive and I'm going to create a new Word document. As soon as I'm here, I'm going to paste the text uh, using Command V. So right clicking and pasting is not going to work, but a Command V on your MacBook's keyboard will help. Now looking at this, you might be saying, well, this isn't much different. I've still got black text on a white page. Um, to turn on the Immersive Reader features, I'm going to click on the View button, and you should then see Immersive Reader. Now keep in mind that I'm doing this from Word Online, and that's where you're going to see most of the Immersive Reader features really come to life. When you first load Immersive Reader, you get a little tour in the form of these pop-up boxes. Uh, this box is pointing out that we have a pause button as well as some voice settings. These voice settings are only available when you're using the online version. Uh, so you can change things like the pace and uh, the tone of voice, things like that. Next, uh, it's going to point out that you can adjust how the text displays on the page. Now, this is a much more readable format. Uh, those long lines of small font were um, readjusted for the screen, and you can make different changes to the background as well as the spacing of the text. And you can also adjust the number of lines that you see as well. So let's play around with a few of these features to show you how the immersive reader helps readers of an online text. As we actually look at how some of these features work, uh, let's start by using the text-to-speech feature. Uh, notice how in the top left corner there's a word in a gray box already. And when I click play, To the people of the state of New York, after an unequivocal experience of the inefficacy of the subsisting federal government, you are called a... Uh, what we have here is uh, an eye tracker. Um, and so the box is highlighting the word as it's being read. Uh, so that students can keep pace with uh, the fluency of the text-to-speech. Now, that voice was a little fast, and I turned that on uh, for a reason, and that's to show you that I can adjust the voice speed as well as uh, the type of voice, male versus female. Called upon to deliberate on a new constitution for the United States of America. And making those adjustments are immediate. I'm tapping into Office 365's cloud, and so each of those uh, voices is streaming then as it's analyzing the text. Speaking of analyzing the text, let's take a look at some of these other features that I pointed out before and how they change the text as I go. Now, of course, I can adjust the size of the font uh, to something that's comfortable. I can change the spacing, and this feature was on by default. I like this a lot. It uh, turns on essentially double spacing, which is easier to read. Uh, you don't get lost in the lines as quickly, but you're also not changing the original text. Uh, so if I were to go back to the original, the whole text is still on one page. Of course, font as well as background colors can be adjusted as well. I particularly like the white text on black background if I'm going to be reading in a dark space with low light. Now going across to what uh, Microsoft calls the grammar options, I can highlight certain words or also turn off and on the labels for where syllables um, are 
there. Some of these features would be really great to look at some pieces of poetry or even look at students writing. For example, if you wanted students to go through their writing and strengthen some of the verbs that they use in their writing or even add more adjectives or look at whether or not they're using repetitive uh, terms, you can highlight um, the different parts of speech and help students analyze the text as they read. The last tab at the top right corner then is to change the line focus as well as that picture dictionary. And what I mean by picture dictionary is when I click on a word, it highlights it. And in some cases, what uh, ends up happening is uh, I get a little visual uh, as to what that word uh, could be interpreted as. Now, the line focus actually changes how much text is displayed on the screen. So it's not so much the size of the font, but as I click on, for example, three lines, a shadow box appears. So now I can focus on just the line uh, that is being read. I can also narrow down to one line or look more at uh, five lines in the case of perhaps um, trying to use immersive reader with paragraphs. So these features are great, right? But how do we get this reading now in front of students? Because so far, we've only set up this Word document in our own Word Online OneDrive. Uh, so after renaming the file, and I renamed this Federalist 1, I'm going to go over to the Share button on the far right corner. Clicking on Share brings up the option to uh, share directly with certain people. However, I don't want students editing this Word document. So what I'm going to do is click on this center button, and that will bring up some options for my link. I'm going to change my link to allow people in my organization. That way I don't have to specify certain people. And I'm also going to turn off the ability for others to edit this document. When I click Apply, not much happens until I click the Copy Link. And what that's going to do is give me a link that I can copy and then go over to Schoology and paste as a material. Once posted, students can then click on this link, which will open the document in another tab. And just as a review, for them to turn on the Immersive Viewer, they're going to switch to the View tab in Word Online and click Immersive Reader. Thanks for watching the short tutorial. Hope you find it useful uh, with any of your students struggling with reading complex texts.